Hello everybody, Interiteri back again with another video. I just want to give these two giants, these two terminators, these two monsters, these two aliens, call them what you what you want. An applaud for this amazing show that they showed us. My dear God, this was this man that took over four hours, four hours and eleven minutes, something like that. This was one of the best matches that I have seen. Not the best match that I've ever seen, of course not. But for sure, one of top 10 best matches that I have ever seen in my life. What a fight. What a war. What, what a battle, man. These two gladiators. In their 59th clash between these two, nobody has faced each other more times than these two. And the two I'm talking about is, of course, R Rafael Nadal versus Novak Djokovic. And Novak Djokovic, he does one of the most difficult tasks in tennis, taking down the clay court beast, Rafael Nadal, for the second time in his career and L Rafa loses his only third loss in his career in 16 years and Novak is giving him his Novak is the winner in two of R Rafa's only third losses that, that R Rafa has lost in 16 years time in Paris First time Rafa lost in 2009 against Robin Söderling. Second time was against Novak Djokovic in 2015. And now, six years later, Novak Djokovic does it again and defeats Rafa for the second time in French Open. Man, what an impressive performance from Novak Djokovic. My dear God, I don't know if I have seen Novak Djokovic do a better clay court match than this tonight. Maybe that one when he defeated Rafa in 2015 uh, quarterfinal. Maybe he was even better there when he defeated Rafa in straight sets and gave Rafa a 6-1 set in the third. Gave him a breadstick in the third set, if I, if I remember correctly. Maybe that one was even better. But this one tonight was not far away. My tennis fans all around the world. Rafa got the best start with 5 love up. And when I saw Rafa start with 5 love up. I thought to myself. Deja vu. Are we seeing a new scenario from last year. Where Rafa completely destroyed Novak. 6 love, 6-2, six, 7-5. In, in last year's French Open final. I, I got... I, I was thinking that maybe we'll, we are getting to the same scenario. But when Ron Novak Djokovic, the champion that he is, he of course never gives up. He started to slowly but surely take his teeth into Rafa Nadal's service games. And he won three games in that first set. And Rafa eventually served out the first set with 6-3. After Novak take, took back one of Rafa's breaks in that first set. But when, Ra when Novak won those three games in the first set, that, that gave him a belief. Because if Rafa, because Rafa was serving in, in a 5-1 game, I remember the first set. If Rafa would have served out that 5-1 game and would have won that first set 6-1, I, I don't think that would have been great for Novak's confidence, really. But when Novak break Rafa in that 5-1 game to 5-2, and then he held his serve to 5-3, and then Rafa eventually served out the first set in his seventh set point, that gave Novak some kind of belief. He even said it after the match, even though I was love five down in the first set, I was feeling pretty confident with my shots. I felt that I had a clean, I, I was hitting the ball cleanly. And that was exactly the, uh, what the case was, because in the second set, Novak started to play much better, was started to play much cleaner tennis, was, was dictating the rallies, was... Uh, doing a lot of winners and especially he was taking down his unforced errors uh in the first set uh look guys if you look at the entire match novak does does much less unforced errors than rafa nadal that's for sure rafa does 55 unforced errors novak does 37 unforced errors uh so uh so novak does 13 uh less unforced than uh, uh, 
Rafael Nadal, if I'm counting right here. 37 to Novak Djokovic, 55 to... Not 13, I'm sorry. Uh, 18. 18. Novak does 18 less unforstellers than uh, uh, Rafa Nadal. So that is a lot. So Rafa does 18 more unforstellers than Novak Djokovic. All right. If we look at the winners, R R Novak does 50 winners and Rafa does 48 winners. So Novak does two more winners than Rafa Nadal and 18 less unforstellers than Rafa Nadal. That is a big difference. In the past, when we have seen these two match up, Rafa has always done more winners than Novak and he has done less unforstellers than Novak. What did I say when I did my preview? I said, if Novak wants to win this match, which of course wants, he needs to do a better job in doing more winners than Rafa and doing less unforstellers than Rafa. That was exactly the case. He did that. If you look, the only set where Rafa actually did more winners than Unforsteros was the first set. Rafa does 15 winners in the first set and 12 Unforsteros. So Rafa does three more winners than Unforsteros in the first set. R Novak does 12 winners, 12 Unforsteros in the first set. And then in the second set, Novak does 10 winners uh, and uh, 10 Unforsteros. Even Steven. Rafa in the second set, he does much, uh, he, he, st he starts playing much worse. He does, I, I believe, 11 Unforsteros and the five winners, something like that. So he does uh, much more Unforsteros and very, very little winners in the second set. In the third set, Novak does his best set here, probably, if you look at the winners and uh, Unforsteros count. He does 17 winners and 10 Unforsteros in the third set. Rafa, he does... Uh, 23 Unforsteros and 20 winners in the third set. And if you look at the fourth set, uh, Rafa does 8 Unforsteros and 6 winners only in the fourth set. Uh, so, uh, and so, and, and, uh, so all in all, Djokovic plays a much cleaner match than Rafa Nadal. He plays a much more solid match than Rafa Nadal. He... Uh, he, he, he served, he, he, if you look at the first serve landing, R R Djokovic lands 64% first serve in, Rafa 65, Rafa lands 1% more first serve in than Novak, but Novak wins 65% uh, uh, 60, uh, behind these first serves. 65% Rafa, 59%. If you look at this, so Rafa is not that far behind in winning points behind first serve. If you look at the second serve points won, Novak's, of course, he dominates Rafa there because Novak uh, has a, the best return in the game. Let's face it, Novak wins 50% behind his second serve, R Rafa wins only 40%. So R Novak wins 10 more percent percentage behind second serves. So, uh, Novak, he breaks serve eight times out of 22 opportunities. So Novak, he really created a lot of break punch opportunities, 22 break punch opportunities, and he, and he break eight times. And Rafa created 16 break punch opportunities, and he, and he break six times out of 16 break punch opportunities that he had. Uh, Novak wins 142 points. All in all, Rafa wins 124 points. So, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, 124 points. So Novak wins 18 more points than Rafa Nadal. So <sighs> Rafa was the better player only the first set. The numbers are not lying. He wins the first set 6-3. Then Rafa Djokovic wins the second 6-3. And then the third set. The third set was a key set here, guys. Uh, Djokovic was up with the break two times in the third set. Rafa came back the first time. And then Djokovic was up in the break for the second time in the, in the third set, was serving for the third set in a 5-4 game in the third set and had 30 love. But the warrior that Rafa is, he never gives up. He, of course, he, ca he, of course, he came back and uh, took and break Novak's serve in that third set. In that uh, third set, uh, in that ninth game of the third set, and level the third set to five all, and then in the tenth game, I'm sorry, in the tenth in the tenth game of of the third set, and level the third set to five all, and then Rafa held his serve to six five, and then actually had a set point in that twelfth game of the third set, 
Uh, but Novak, he saved that set point with a beautiful drop shot. What a drop shot he did. Really brave shot from Novak to, to, to play that. Because it, probably that was the biggest point of the match. If Rafa converts that set point in the third set and takes the lead 2-1, maybe he would have won the match. Because that third set was a key set. Because this match was really close, at least for the... This match was really close for the third, the first three sets was really close. And if Rafa would have won that third set, if he would, would have converted that set point he had in that 12th game in the third set, where, uh, who knows, maybe Rafa would have won this match in four or five sets, who knows really. But Novak, he saved that one with a beautiful drop shot and took his, himself to a tiebreak. And in the tiebreak, Novak was just a, was the stronger one. And... A key element of the tiebreak was in that 5-3 five, three, five, point, in that, I'm sorry, in that 4-3 point where Rafa misses an misses a easy volley at the net. I don't know, man. I, I, last time I saw Rafa missing that easy volley at the net was probably against Titi Pass in that quarterfinal in, in Astralopan earlier this year. But th that... Easy volley, Rafa missed in that 4-3 point in the third set tiebreak. That really cost him the tiebreak. And, and Novak then won that point to 5-3. Then Rafa won the other point to 5-4. Then Novak had two serves. And he did two great points in that 5-4, on, on those 5-4 points. And then took a lead to 6-4. And in the end, won the tiebreak with 7-4. Great performance of Novak in the tiebreak, really clean performance, he was the cleaner player, he was the so more solid player, he was the more consistent player. And then in the fourth set, Rafa gets a, a good start with a, with a break all early in the fourth set and has the lead with two love up in the fourth set, but I don't know man, after Rafa took that two love lead in the fourth set, Novak just he pushed that beast mode button, he just wins six straight, six straight games and wins the fourth set 6-2. But in the, in the fourth set, I could clearly see Rafa was tired. It was Rafa, Novak weared him down. Novak weared him physically down, guys, because I could clearly see that Rafa was out of gas in that fourth set. He was out of gas. After Rafa took the lead in the fourth set, two love up, and Novak came back and leveled the the uh, that that break that Rafa had to two all, Rafa was not the same player after that two all game. He just I could see it because Novak he was playing such clean tennis with so less unforced, so little unforced errors in that fourth set. I think Novak did only uh, five unforced errors in that in that four, fourth set, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and. Uh, Five on first set or something like that, and six or seven winners in that fourth set. So he was not giving Rafa any three points in that fourth set, that's for sure. And he was pushing Rafa, he was bossing Rafa back and forth, left and right, left and right. And Novak's back and was so tremendously good, man. I said that in the preview, a big key to the match is also Novak's back and needs to be on on his all cylinders and it was Novak was hitting down the line backhands really great he was hitting some cross court backhands also really good even though that in my opinion he was hitting too much of cross court backhands time to time because Rafa was do doing a lot of four and down the line winners but uh, but Novak, he, he, he likes to hit, to challenge Rafa's uh, uh, forehand. He's not afraid of challenging Rafa's forehand uh, with his cross-court backhand. And uh, many times it worked, but sometimes it also didn't work because Rafa also was doing a lot of uh, down-the-line for, uh, for forehand winners. But I loved Novak's down-the-line backhand and the, the key, maybe the biggest shot of Novak in this match 
his cross court forehand. My God, he killed Rafa with that cross court forehand. What an angle he was hitting, he was fighting with that cross court forehand. It reminded me of Novak from older, from his younger days when he was winning against Rafa on clay back in 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Those five, six years where Novak was defeating Rafa Nadal on clay. Both at French Open like he did in 2015 and outside French Open like he did in Monte Carlo, uh, like he did in Madrid and Rome 10 years ago, 7 to 10 years ago. It was in that same way Novak was beating Rafa back then with, cro with beautifully cross-court uh, forehands and he did the same, he did exactly the same in this match. And Novak has tried to do this before against Nadal, he tried to do that in last year's French Open final as well. The difference was... Rafael Nadal's backhand was not firing in last stage match of final. Rafael Nadal's cross court backhand was out of this world. That was not the case today. Because when Novak hits those cross court forehands, when he finds those unbelievable angles, what does Rafael Nadal need to do? Yeah, he has two options. Hit, the, hit his backhand down the line. It is a really difficult shot because the net is upper, higher on, on the sides, we all know that. Or hit cross-court forehands. He tried to hit cross-court forehands, he was not successful of doing it. He was doing errors or he was hitting those, those cross-court forehands on Novak Djokovic's strike zone with the forehand. He was not finding great cross-court forehand angles, Rafael Nadal, when Novak was pushing him to those cross-court, uh, with his cross-court forehand on, 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 on the right sides. Rafael Nadal was not finding his cross-court backhand whatsoever in this match. He was doing errors with that shot. He was not finding uh, winners with that shot whatsoever. Novak was pinting him, was pinting him, was penetrating him, was attacking Rafael Nadal's backhand with his cross-court forehand and he was really really successful at, 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 at in that game plan he was not doing that quite much in the first set Rafa was protecting the, that that cross-court backhand of his pr pretty good in that first set I must say and to some extent in the second set as well but in the third set and in the fourth set Ra Novak Djokovic was so successful with that cross-court forehand of his he was doing so much damage not necessarily winners but he was pushing Nadal to the corners and what will happen yeah one cross-court forehand two cross-court forehand and what will happen in the end? Yeah, Rafa Nadal will hit a cross court uh, backhand uh, into the net, or will give, or will hit a cross court uh, backhand short, and then Djokovic can take one step or two steps forward and hit a down the line forehand and winner. And that was exactly what Novak did. And sometimes even Novak did winners with that cross court forehand. Sometimes with beautifully, especially in the third and the fourth set, some, he hit some beautifully great cross court forehand winners. Not many, but one or two he did winners with the, with, with the cross court forehand of Novak. But mostly of the times he was pushing Nadal uh, on, on that side so Nadal can, can be short and then Novak would attack with the forehand or backhand. So that was a great game plan from Novak Djokovic, especially in the third and the fourth set. And then Novak was returning really good, especially in the third and the fourth set. My dear God, if you look at the stat, the first serve return points won, no, uh, Novak Djokovic wins 41%, Rafa Nadal wins 35%. That is huge difference. If you look at the Second serve return points won. Rafa is, is actually a little better there with 44% winning second serve return points won and Novak Djokovic with 43% uh, winning second serve return points won. But the biggest damage was here in the first serve return points won where Novak wins 41% and Rafa Nadal wins 35%. All in all, Novak Djokovic was the better player. Let's face it, the numbers are not lying. 50 winners, 37 are for Steros. Rovak Jovic does 13 more winners than Afrosteros. Rafa Nadal, he does 55 Afrosteros and 48 winners. Rafa Nadal does 7 more Afrosteros than winners. There you have the key, guys. The, the player who does more winners than Afrosteros, he will, majority, majority of the time, will win the match. He did 
Novak Djokovic did a much cleaner match than Rafa Nadal. I have, I have never seen Rafa Nadal doing 55 Amphrosteros in a clay court match. This is the first time. I have never seen it. It has to do with Novak Djokovic being the opponent, of course. Novak Djokovic is not Schwarzman, it's not Sinner, it's not uh, Ricard Gasquet. And of course, it has also to do with Rafa Nadal. He is not quite as good in this year's French Open like he was last year. It, it, he just isn't. The, 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 you can see that as not physically, not mentally. You can. He just isn't. He 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 has not hitting the ball. He has not been serving as good this year. That's why when we, I felt that Novak Djokovic will have a chance in this match, I didn't pick him to win. I'm not gonna lie here. Well, the videos are out there. They the proofs are out there. I don't pick Novak to win, but am I shocked that Novak won? Of course, I'm not shocked. For God's sakes, he is the world number one for a reason. He has defeated Rafa Nadal most times on clay that any other human being has done. Eight times now with the victory tonight. So I'm not shocked. I just and I said for Novak to defeat Rafa Nadal, he needs to bring up on the court. He needs to produce a beast mode level and he maybe did that maybe he did a beast mode level if not a beast mode level performance for sure Novak did a great level performance for sure he was not horrible Novak absolutely not he was not average Novak absolutely not he was not good absolutely not Novak was in great level performance mode in my opinion you know it was between great level mode and beast mode level then there you have novak's level to in, in this match between great level mode and and beast level mode so something between novak was rafa nadal i must say he was between average level mode and good level mode he was not horrible mode no but i can't say that rafa was uh, great mode level. No, he wasn't. I must, I must admit that. If you do 55 Amphro like, 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 not, like Rafa did, I can say that he was in great level mode. No, absolutely not. No, Rafa was in between average and good, uh, good level mode. Between in, uh, there, Rafa was. Uh, not horrible, not great. Between average and good level mode. Uh, but it also, it, like I said, it depends on Novak because Novak is, he is a beast, man. He is a beast. My God. N not many players defeat Rafa at French Open. Not many players got my tennis best all around the world. Novak has done it now twice. Not once, twice. I, 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 I'm speechless. I'm speechless. He took down Rafael Nadal after four hours and eleven minutes, and in the fifth, in, in that fourth set, he took him down physically. He he weared him down. Rafael Nadal couldn't move. Great in that fourth set. He, he moved, but not as. He couldn't move fast. He was not lighting fast in that fourth set. I could see that, my dear friends. I really could see that. Novak Djokovic, he looked fresh. He looked fresh in that fourth, fourth set. He didn't look tired. It was Nadal who looked gassed out in that fourth set. His tank was empty in that fourth set, for God's sake, Rafa Nadal. Age is not only a number. Age is not only a number. Even though the Novak is not very young himself, he, he is at least one year younger than Nadal. One year, it is. It is. Oh, he's not thirty. He he is also old. No joke. He's thirty-four years old. Rafa is thirty-five years old. But one year, he had, he is at least one year younger. And Rafa was doing a lot of running. He was doing a lot of running in this match. No one was kissing the baseline, especially the third and the fourth set, uh, and the second set to some extent. So he. He tired Rafa Nadal out. He he weared him down. He weared him down in the fourth set. And I and I, I believe that you guys saw that as well. That Rafa in the fourth set was tired. He was tired. That's why Novak won six straight games in that fourth set. Six straight games from love to down. He won six straight games and won the fourth set six two. Big congratulations to Novak Djokovic. Now waits a big match for him on Sunday. And I will call that match on Sunday Novak Djokovic's biggest match of his career. I don't care that it is Tsitsipas' opponent and it is not Nadal or Federer. 
Nadal, he took him out on the way to that final. He, do, he did that in the semifinals. And I had a feeling when I did my preview two weeks ago, Novak's chances are bigger in the semifinal than on the final. Because Rafa Nadal is almost unhuman in finals. Even though that Rafa has never lost a semifinal either in the French Open. This is Rafa's first ever loss in a semifinal. But in finals, he just is unhuman. So he took him down in the semifinal. Novak Djokovic now awaits him his biggest match of his career on Sunday. Man, do you know what is what it means if you win, if he wins French Open on Sunday and he becomes only the third ever player to win all the major twice? I will I will give him the gold status. I will give him my tennis fans all around the world on Sunday. I will dedicate him the gold, the greatest tennis player of all time. I don't. Care that he has only 19 if he wins on Sunday and Rafa and not Joko and Fed has 20. I don't give a damn about that to win Fred Chopin for the second time and to be only the third player after who has won it two times before. I think it Rod Laver has won it two times, all the major twice, and Roy Emerson all the majors twice, if I'm not mistaken. And Noah can be the third player to ever do that on Sunday. And on, and on the way, he has taken down the greatest clay court player of all time. The, the clay court beast himself, Rafa Nadal, in an epic four-set battle who took over four hours. And if he takes down Tsitsipas on Sunday, because I don't think, I don't think Novak will have an easy time with Tsitsipas. Tsitsipas is feeling pretty happy. He, he, I am completely convinced that Tsitsipas will he wanted to face Djokovic more than he, than he wanted to face Nadal because Nadal has a top spin and Nadal would have, would have destroyed Tsitsipas back and once in line and back and, but now, now he has a chance to go Djokovic Djokovic is not the clear winner on Sunday absolutely not he is not maybe we'll get the same deja vu like we got in 2015 where Djokovic defeated Rafa Nadal in the quarters and then lost to Stan Wawrinka in the finals in four sets I would not be surprised if we get the same scenario. I believe Noah will be tremendously nervous on Sunday. I, I just can't imagine. That is a, Novak's biggest match in his career. That is no, you, you saw when he won this match in the semifinal. He was not celebrating crazy. He, was, he, he, just, he, just, he just did a fist pump and was watching, was looking at his team and was relieved and happy inside, but he knows he has not won the title. On Sunday, wait his biggest match of his life. Not only me, many tennis experts in the entire world will delicate, will, will cement him as the greatest tennis player of all time if he wins on Sunday. He wins all the majors twice. Federer will never do that. Uh, Nadal will never do that. We all know Nadal will never win Western Open again. Nadal will never win any majors outside French Open ever again. If he didn't win French Open this year, how in hell will he win Wimbledon, who starts about two, two, three weeks from now? How in hell will he win Wimbledon, Rafael Nadal, for God's sake? In Wimbledon, you need to have a good serve. Rafael Nadal, he... He was broken eight times in this final. He did eight double faults, Rafa Nadal, and six aces. Novak did six aces and only three double faults. Rafa, eight double faults. Rafa Nadal is doing a lot of double faults in the entire French Open tournament. And that's why I had a feeling that Rafa served. Rafa has been playing good in French Open. Let's face it, he has won all of his matches, uh, almost all of his matches in straight sets, besides that match against Diego in the quarterfinal. It is not to be. Uh, Diego is a good clay court player, so you, you, you should never be feel ashamed of, lo of losing a set with Diego. But when it comes to serving, he has not been serving superior, Rafa Nadal. He has been doing a lot of double faults. Uh, and he, against Djokovic, he didn't come away. He, Djokovic didn't let him. Djokovic punished him. He punished him with that weak serve that Rafa had in this match with eight double faults. Uh, so. If Ra Djokovic wins that match on Sunday, my dear God, I don't want to hear comments down below. I don't want to hear, don't make me mad. Don't make me mad. This is, this is a time for Djokovic. We congratulate, we, we, we congratulate, con say big congrats to Djokovic, to his fans, to his team. Djokovic has done one of the most difficult achievements of all time when it comes as a tennis player. He took down the clay court beast Rafael Nadal at Paris. 
over four hours. And what is more special, he, he has done it twice now. He has done it twice now, my tennis fans all around the world. And if he goes and wins the title on Sunday and becomes the only third player in tennis history of winning all the major twice, what do you, what hell do you want more of him? He has won all the majors, he has won all the masters twice. He has won most masters together with Rafa Nadal 36 times. He will be 19 time Grand Slam champion if he wins on Sunday. And then if he wins Wimbledon as well. Oh my dear God, then he has 20. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this 30 minutes long video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and see you next time. Peace.